Thank you guys so much for coming out this evening. Again, my name is Nick Karwoski, and I was a mentor for Cheryl Hager, uh, one of the early stage ventures uh, taking part in the Sandbox tonight. I'm so fortunate to be involved in this program and love the support they provide to all the entrepreneurs here tonight. It's very encouraging to watch as many of these participants take their idea and turn it into a possible bu viable business. In the past few months, I've learned a lot from my fellow mentors because their backgrounds are in completely different fields than mine. I've also seen so much about what works and what doesn't. One of the other mentors on our team was Paul Franzosa, a product and brand building specialist. Although we were on the same page for most of the program and the advice that we were giving, it was fun to see alternative views for questions that Cheryl would bring up regarding packaging for her product, uh, marketing to parents versus kids, and how to price a product in the early stages for a few examples. Also, providing advice for Cheryl and the Indigo Pixies has reminded me of numerous aspects of getting your own business up and running and the importance of having a team to run those ideas by. The Sandbox creates this channel and allows the participants to work smart, not just hard. So a little bit of background about myself is I've worked with a few different startup companies ranging from fitness to medical devices to video production. And although some have been more successful than others, I've learned that there is no cookie cutter formula to success. Each company requires research, a solid team, and an incredible amount of, um, an incredible amount of trial and error. I definitely don't have nearly much, as much experience as the two previous speakers tonight, but I'm here to tell you about my experience on ABC Shark Tank and to offer some practical advice from the entrepreneurial launch pad that we had with the company Surfset. I have to read my speech here a little bit. My involvement began in March of 2012 when a friend of mine from New Hampshire, which is where I'm from, asked if she could stay at my place in Los Angeles, which is where I was living at the time. She was coming up for a segment on Access Hollywood uh, to showcase her surf-inspired fitness board. As you'll see in the videos, it's a six foot long surfboard that you stand on top of inflated air discs to mimic the motion of surfing. Uh, so it's unstable and it's really good for your core. Um, so she, along with the two other co-founders, started this company in late 2011. And we're teaching classes at a pop-up studio in New York City. Uh, she, excuse me, after that trip, she asked me if I could help out with some of the other shows and media events that started coming up. And, uh, I was more than happy to help out. So they sent me the first prototype of the boards, and my brand, and bra my brand ambassador role developed into the marketing and media role as the company generated more and more, more momentum. We decided to pursue the Shark Tank route after we developed a viable business model to sell version 2.0 of our boards to home consumers and fitness locations for group exercise classes and personal training. After filling out a 90-page application, getting selected out of over 50,000 businesses that applied, sitting in a dark room with one couch and one lamp without a shade, and filming for over an hour and a half just to be cut down to 14 minutes of airtime, including staged reactions and forced high fives, we received a $300,000 investment from Mark Cuban for 30% of our company, which you can watch on episode two of season four. So a little fun fact is that even if you don't get an offer or you choose not to accept an offer on the show, the producers and ABC still has up to eight months to decide if they want to exercise the option of 5% of your company just by being on the show. So it's something to think about if that is an, uh, an option that you want to go down or a route that you want to go down. So we're going to show you a little clip here. Um, this was from, I don't know if you're familiar with the show or not but it's kind of that what's happening six months down the road, like an update filling uh, on the company's success. So there's the two co-founders on the board and they decided that before Mark could leave that he's gotta try the board out a little bit. So you'll see why we decided that, which ABC decided that they weren't gonna use this. <laughs> so he's up there and it's a little, it's, it's tough to get a hang of for sure. Uh, I think he started getting a little cocky and um, tried to go for the one foot Water walkers. <laughs> and uh, it's, like I said, it's challenging to get the hang of it first, uh, especially with jeans on. But luckily, he was fine, and he's an investor, so he couldn't sue his own company. <laughs> uh, and that's actually the worst wipeout that we've had teaching all these classes, which were 
They're now in over 105 locations in the country and over 25 internationally. So, although Surfset is a product-based fitness company, I think there are a few useful pieces of business advice that I'd like to share with you all um, as you pursue your own entrepreneurial journeys tonight. The first is that in order to scale and grow your business, as the secretary mentioned, excuse me, as the mayor mentioned, it's essential to focus on one thing that you want to be the best in. Many people and companies approached us with ideas and persuasive partnering angles, especially as we got more media attention. We tried stretching ourselves way too thin because we couldn't say no, and we were really easily influenced by what it sounded like on paper. In application, it created a lot more work and took away manpower from what we were actually doing really well. Turning down those options are tough, but I believe they, they allow you to focus on what you were doing and continue working towards your goal in the most effective manner. Don't lose sight of the original reason you created the company. Nowadays, a lot of startups are focusing on one specific service that giant corporations offer, but can't deliver it nearly as well to the consumer because it's an additional feature or an add-on that falls to the wayside and it's not their main focus. The startup is able to listen to the consumer and create a better product or service because that's where they are devoting 99% of their time and effort every day. If it sounds like a wicked fast way to grow your company, it most likely is not sustainable. This ties in with my second concept that really allowed me to see the beauty of growing a small business. You may have a business model that works for where you are now, but don't be afraid to pivot that model as you start to see how your vision differs from reality. For example, we started off by selling our surfboards and certifying trainers and thought that that would be our revenue model. It wasn't until we realized that the trainers and at-home users, people at home that were purchasing the boards, still needed material uh, that they could learn and teach to their own clients that we decided that we had another model to create a fitness program along with a licensing model where people could use our brand name. Um, we didn't change our mission, we just pivoted to better suit the wants of our customers. The best part is, is that in a small company, these pivots don't need to travel up the chain of command or take months. You just commit to making the change and implement it. The last piece of advice that I want to share is in regards to your early adopters. The people who buy into your company before it proves itself sustainable. Rewarding these individuals and businesses is critical in generating the most important customer for any business, the repeat customer. There are so many insecurities as you begin your business adventure but as soon as someone comes back a second time, you know you must have done something right. I remember we partnered with a very well-known gym in New York City, and they had an issue with a few of their mats on the board. This was the second gym that ever purchased our boards and gave us a hub to work out of in New York City. My business partners wanted to ignore the situation and uh, fulfill the orders that we had adding to new locations uh, around the country instead of focusing on this, this issue that we had. I decided to respond to the issue after convincing my team that there was a better option and send them new boards, since that was our only option at the time. By addressing the New York gym, the problem, and giving them more than they had asked for, it gave us a blueprint on how to deal with similar issues with future customers and strengthened our public relation ability. Getting frustrated with their request and putting them second to our new customers would have definitely been the easier route to take, but we would have lost our second ever customer. By tackling this issue head on, we were able to bring in new revenue sources for both of us, from corporate events who would rent out their space for Surfset classes, or bring publicity their way by using their location for Surfset media and TV segments. When it came time for them to reorganize their group exercise program, we got a call in no time at all to certify more trainers for them. As I mentioned before, there's no formula to create a successful company. But by striving to be the best in one area, pivoting the business model when it makes sense, and rewarding the early adopters, you may position yourself on the right path to success. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be sitting as a shark on the show in the future. Thanks, guys.